All right. Welcome, welcome to the Moments of Clarity podcast. We got um, Ramon's back. We got Shaheem. We got Vanessa. We got Sway Lee over on the West Coast. Uh, listening, watching the draft right now, right? Yeah, watching the NFL draft. It's virtual, right? It's a virtual thing. Yeah, they they doing it all. All the all players is is in their crib right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Where are you staying? I, we had a staff member talk to you for a minute, and you said you were homeless. You couldn't get to your new house or something a couple of weeks ago. What's up with you? I made it to my destination. When I'm in a, I'm in LA. I made it to the crib. You made it. Is in a new crib you just got? Looks pretty white and clean and new up there. Everything that's going on. Yeah, kind of hard yeah. to play with furniture right now or do too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got it too. That's exactly why I got it because it was so just white and clean and look like a so lot of clean. Congratulations. Enjoy it. The hard work paid right? This is the this is the Thank crib you. that you, you put on the gram a while ago and you had the Oh no, that's my old crib. Oh, that's the old crib. So this is yeah, another crib. crib. And that, that that money is coming in so crazy right now. <laughs> crib after crib after crib. <laughs> Gotta get in that real estate, man. Yeah, real estate. I wish more rappers understood the investment in the real estate, what that does for you, you know? What, oh, what was the building? What was that's like? Gonna, that's going to be that long term, you know? Oh, yeah. long-term. Long term. It's not immediate money, but long term, it takes care of you and yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was it like for you, man, when you was able to buy, like, your first crib on your own, man? Like, no family, like... Get a mortgage, right? <laughs> I don't even know if you're getting... For real. Nah, that shit was crazy. It was just like, damn, like this is what we had in life. Like, you know, just like a wake up call. Like, it's it's all positive. You know, it's all good, it good vibes. It's like, damn, you really overcame all the stupid stuff that was standing in the way of, yeah. of this goal that she was trying to reach. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was like a, a stepping stone. Like, what was your um, first what's big next? Purchase? My what? What was your first big purchase? Something that really my first big purchase yeah, was, was first a car. Yeah, I bought this G wagon. I don't want to be a lame. Like, well, actually, I bought a charger before I bought a G wagon. So I bought a charger, a Dodge Charger, new, the one in like a police car, off the lot, twenty k, twenty k cash. <laughs> I was like, damn, I was like, a whip, bro. <laughs> Yo, you you want to know one of my favorite Sway Lee stories? I'm gonna tell you. What? So me and my man Ramon, we got uh, we got San Francisco. I can't remember where I seen y'all at, man. I think we we was in San Francisco. We going to a Swiss Beach party, right? Swiss is Swiss is DJing, party jumping crazy, and then I just see like just oh yeah, we know we was in um, we was in LA. The Ooh, man, floor. Yeah. Like, what the hell is going on in the middle of the dance floor? Like, people are just in, like, a a big huddle. We were dancing and shit. Yeah. So I go over there. My man ain't got no shirt on. He got, like, these glow sticks. And he is having a (laughs) one-man tied up with Swiss. Nah, that was was dope. You, you and then the remember after the after the party we was outside. Yeah. I could see my man outside for Dolo, no shirt on, just chilling, getting like a I think like a hot dog or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> no shirt. <laughs> I'm like you hey, come out the show, you get hot up in that motherfucker. Yeah, but but I love it though, man, because every every time I see you. It's always just a great positive energy. Yeah. So you, re- you really bring that energy of just like the young, happy people. You know what I'm saying? For real. You know, some of these guys, they got attitudes and they got oh, man. Shoulders, but you look like you really just enjoying being a hip hop star. For real talk, it's a good life. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to be. Walk around with our head down, just gloomy all the time, you know. We have our, everybody got their bad moments in life, but you know, you can't let it just rule your life, you know, so you gotta be happy, man. You're living a good life right now. You and your brother, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all, of course, like, since, since no flex on, really, 
We've been seeing y'all do like a million shows. Y'all got um one of the best live shows and all the music, not just hip hop, all the music, period. And um, Thank you. obviously with this COVID-19, no shows are going on, but I think you may have been the first part. Yes, boo the COVID. But I think that you have, may have been the first one, Vanessa Ramon, correct me if I'm mistaken, but I think you were the first right, one right, to right, do the, right. the performance, to do right. the COVID quarantine performance. Mm -hmm. Tell me that about was another first. That was another yeah. first that we did. And it was crazy. There was 275,000 people in there watching that shit. <laughs> that shit was hilarious, bro. It really what made was you viral. I was just, it, man. What made you decide to? You know, I had to just get the fans the same experience, but I had to do it within the, the rules of this quarantine. So I was like, hmm, what can I do? I was like, I can just act like I'm doing a real concert on live and just like act it out. And that should be legendary. And I was just, I was just doing it in my head like some cool funny shit. Like, you know, I was gonna do it like a real concert, but also have like some humor to it, like make it funny a little bit. Like, you know, with this with the little teddy bear coming on stage, acting like a person, beating them up on crowd surfing. It's like a whole simulation type thing. And that's what I was just thinking about. I was like, I, I feel like I feel like people would enjoy it. Like I feel like I would enjoy it. And for sure, it started a whole wave. It's opened up a it whole did, it really market. did. Good for you, yeah. Where it started up a whole nother market. Like now it's like you get phone calls like do the virtual shows and stuff like it's dope. What is it what is it like to perform, you know, just I mean, obviously, all uh, performers, y'all do rehearsals, so, you know, you do uh, rehearse in studios or wherever where there's no people, but, you know, we may have to wrap our head around the fact that it's going to be concert, concerts happening with, uh, with no people in, in, in the stands. Yeah, what's what it going to be like? What is it like to, to think about that? That shit's going to be fucking crazy, like. <laughs> shit, what's going like virtual concerts in the future is now like type stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like we'll be back we'll be back in the streets before you know it. And right back to the money. I feel like this might last one or two more months. You know, that ain't gonna hurt nothing too bad. But you know, it's definitely gonna be a social media boost too at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Everything, everybody's that's where they're hanging out at now online. It's a simulation, like everybody in this virtual world, that's all they got to do with their time right now. So it's definitely gonna be a fluctuation, in like social media and shit. Obviously, you, you, you're very into the, the sports world and everything, too. Like, you know, yeah, big NBA head, like big gaming head, you know, all of that. At the same time, when we talk about it, fans not coming to those shows like what do you think about these having like basketball games and not having no fans and all oh yeah that's like that's like it's devastating like i can't for those players you know what I'm saying they do this they put on a show that's their life so like i can definitely sympathize with them like damn bro y'all like it's y'all real career and like y'all bring these people out all over the world and now it's just like Snip is cut short, you know what I'm saying? It's put to a halt immediately without no warning or nothing. So it's like, I don't know, I'm just gonna stay, you know, I'm as anxious as everybody else for stuff to get back right, you know what I'm saying? So we can go back and see it, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's a part of everybody's lifestyle, like entertainment. It's, it's entertainment in itself. You know, you, you know, you, you guys used to, um, we covered a couple of you guys' show that y'all did in Alabama. Mm -hmm. at the end of the year, like around like right before Christmas time. Um, we all like gave back to the community, you know, which I thought was really, really dope. And one of the things I appreciate about y'all, y'all being so young and being having that state of mind, because you really don't start to think like that if you get you know, you gotta be that young and to be on the stage. That says a lot mm -hmm. about it, you know what I'm saying? That was real yeah. dope. I think the shit was dope. You know, Appreciate that, bro. Uh, and y'all did it for a couple, you know, y'all always do it. Yeah, yeah, for real. I'm looking ways to do it now. I did it recently. The last time I, like, really got to get back 
you know, I just gave away a couple of Xboxes at, um, in Inglewood. Gave away some Xboxes to the kids, like, that was making good grades. Pulled up to the school, boom, handed them out. It's just lit. You know what I'm saying? Just got to get back. I feel like that's how you get good karma and everything. Like, that's how you, you know what I'm saying? You got to recycle it. The wealth, so just the feeling of receiving a gift. You know what I'm saying? Like, and y'all, y'all being from down there, like in Alabama, obviously you got Atlanta, and you know with all this shit going on, they talking about opening up Atlanta, like whatever. Oh, know. I'm pulling up. Yeah, you will. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> okay. You don't think it's too early? Hell no. Nah. I'm be honest with you, bro. I feel like if I don't got this shit already, I already had it, or I'm not, I'm immune to it or something like that. Mm. I, or it's not really nothing really going on. Cause bro, I done been, I was on tour in all these cities that right as they were exploding with the corona and I'm out, I'm active in these cities. I'm out in these cities. Like, and then you leave the city the next day, you hear all this stuff like coronavirus, 45 cases in this city, 65 cases. Right as I'm leaving the city, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm feeling sick and everything. Like some days I'm like, damn, before I even knew about the COVID, I'm feeling sick already in some of these cities. Coughing and everything. I'm like, what the fuck? But I smoke a lot of weed too. So I'm like, maybe it's the back of it. Like, boom. And then I had like, even recently, right when everybody was supposed to be on quarantine, I had two more shows and I went to Mexico. Thousands of people out there. Thousands of people in the gathering came to my show. I had a whole concert, thousands of people. Club appearance, thousands of people in this club, touching everything, doing it, drinking after each other, everything. Everything was good. I came back to me. I'm still good. Like I haven't, like I still leave my house every day and go to the studio. I'm not encouraging nobody to do this. Are you wearing a mask everywhere? No. No mask. No I mask. Would, I, I had, he I looked at us like we were nuts on that some mask shit just now, right? I had this mask right here because they make you wear it. Like if you go into the store. But I might have it just like this. That's like. the fanciest mask I've seen anybody have yet. <laughs> <laughs> that is, it's got a heart on, that is the, I mean, that's the nicest mask I've seen. It's dope, it's just dope, I ain't gonna lie. Thank you, for real, no, they, they swag me up with this. Uh, so I don't mind wearing it too, because it's fresh, and it's, it's 3M, so I'm like, whatever. But I ain't even wearing it, like, and I've been out in the public, and I'm still good. Like, so Did you like, say that mask was 3M's? 3M, 3M. <laughs> Oh, like reflecting. Oh, I thought you was talking about three million dollars. I said, <laughs> oh, shit, three M diamond uh, cloth. It's diamond cloth. <laughs> but no, nah, yeah, man, I don't monkey? know. My monkeys, they, um, right now. Like, I'm so concerned about the monkeys. I got one of my monkeys. This other monkey, I'm going through some legal shit to get him back, like, fighting tooth and nail, like, to get him back. Fight, 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 get the man. I'm fighting like to get him back with these with some legal shit. Oh, the authorities, man. Yeah, they came and they took confiscated one of my monkeys because I ain't have them. I had them in my house and it was like I they raided my shit basically and they took the money. And so now I'm just fighting to get him back. I'm gonna get him back though. I ain't stopping trying to get him. French Montana has a monkey and he let me meet his monkey and I was so excited about it. I mean, it's not every day yeah. that you get to fuck with a monkey, you know. <laughs> it's, so it's, it's a, a childhood it's dream. Cool. Yeah. It's for real. Our monkeys, me and French monkeys, they're in the same place right now. Like, they're both in Vegas. I feel Pooches are friends. Like, mine and French's, they're like, they've got their own well, actually, they're not friends, but they live around each other. They don't like each other. They're like, French right. monkey is mean. French's monkey is kind of mean, right? Yeah, he's mean to the monkeys, and my monkey don't tolerate no shit. So, my monkey be going back to his monkey. Like, they fight. They're like uh, Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy in life. Real tough. <laughs> Dr. Doolittle face said. So you have one monkey with you now? I'm so into the monkey thing. Yeah, I got one monkey. He's in, I keep him in Vegas, but one of my monkeys is confiscated. Oh, that's, I okay. I thought you meant, I got you. Okay, I understand that. they really like, they can raid it. Are you an animal person or a monkey person? Animals. Yeah, like, I'm in tune with my animals. So I have wake up, I just want to be like, in my animals form and just in the wild and just I'm with monkeys you. and hyenas around me. Like Hi hyenas I'm gonna plant some trees you. and have a for real, I'm gonna have a forest one day, no cap like I'm gonna plant plant all the trees in the forest. Like 
I'm gonna plant them soon, so they grow. Like by the time I'm older, the trees are like develop, flourish. You make the forest, then the animals come to oh, it. It's like it's nature. Like it brings it. Real the Whole thing. If you bring it out and you create the forest, and the next thing you know, and the deer comes, and then the this comes, and then the this comes. Real life form. You know, yeah, the life form. Yeah, I mean, real talk. It really is fascinating what can happen with just what you, the effort, the small effort you can make. You know. Mm -hmm. real so I'm really excited about your forest, and I really look forward to seeing it. Thank you. Who is your spirit animal, man? When they talk about that's my spirit animal. Who, who, who my spirit you? animal is yes. a fucking lemur. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I don't even know what a lemur does. <laughs> It's like a like a monkey type thing. Like a monkey type thing that stretches and jumps in the trees, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My spirit animal is a gorilla. Mm. That's a that's a that's a beast of an animal, right? I mean that's, For real. that's the king of the jungle right there, right? I'm telling you. I can see that. I can see yeah, that. Yeah, that's my spirit animal, no cap. Wild and free, having a great time. So do you check Jesus in on any chasing. of the politics that go on? Do you watch any of the Trump stuff? Do you watch any of the Governor stuff, do you care at all about, not that you have to, but do you care at all oh, about yeah, no. all the politics that are involved with all this quarantine, or does that just get redundant to you? I'm, I'm overwhelmed by it by now. I almost can't. Yeah, I don't want to hear it no more because I already know the basis of it. Yeah. There's really nothing else they can tell me that'll make me feel like, damn, I, I didn't know this. Because at the end of the day, it's some sort of contagious virus created. They have different hypotheses of how it was created. So, right. But, at the end of the day, some type of virus that was created is spreading from human to human from the form of touches and interactions. So I heard that a million times. So I don't really, I don't care if it mutates, whatever it is. Like, I don't want to hear nothing about it. Like, <laughs> it's cool. I'm waiting. I'm really just waiting on the um, waiting on the flip switch. We can get back to you know what I'm saying. Get back outside. You, get you back to these so, restaurants. You guys are so huge. Like with shows. Like that's such a a big part of like, you know, your brand and, and what you do. Mm -hmm. What do you think about having to rethink like performing shows? Like you said, like not performing in front of a crowd or having a semi crowd. Like, Oh yeah, no, nah, that shit. You gotta think, you gotta just be really creative. Like, right. you gotta, like, what can I do next? Like even Travis Scott, how he just did a concert in Fortnite. That was crazy. That was dope. Yeah, you sure. got to be doing stuff like that. Like, even how I did the first live concert, like, you got to be doing stuff like that. Like, yeah. history and live, like, what's next? How can you do it next? How can you reach the people, the masses, next in a entertainment form? Like, where you still performing and doing, giving what you have to offer, like, which is your singing, dancing, rapping, whatever it is. You just, you just got to do it, deliver it in a creative way, like, the most creative way under our, with our circumstances. You know what I'm saying? That we have do you think that you think it's gonna go back to normal, like not normal, but Hell yeah. you know, near normal, like this year, like shows? I think people, it's gonna go back to normal for sure. Like I think it's maybe got about two months max before it go back to normal. And I think one thing I think is gonna stick around though these masks. Everybody gonna be wearing a mask still. Like it's gonna be a fashion statement. Like now with the mask, you know the bandanas and stuff. It's gonna be a fashion statement. Oh, it's going to be a total fashion statement. I mean, how long before you order custom Sway Lee masks, right? Oh, I'm, I, I'm behind. I'm late right this. now. Right. <laughs> right. For real. I, I've been on that. I ain't going to lie. I've been procrastinating on that. Whoever the, the, the mask makers are for just custom ones, they don't really have a filter built in, but they're just for looks. They're probably getting orders left and right. Oh, they going? And the new artists are sitting there just, you know, what do I do for promo items for my stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting what, for the bro, label to start bro? sending them. You said what? I'm waiting for the label to start sending them, you know, and all of a sudden you get like the kit with the t-shirt and the mask. You said what? I'm just, I'm starting, I'm waiting for the promo items to come with all the masks for people, you know, their album or their single rollout. And he has a t-shirt, you know? No, nah, I was sitting on a plane. And the dude, he has a cosmetology, like, it's like they sell masks. He's like, I made a million dollars in hand sanitizer just now. And he said, I made like a million in face masks and selling out the, out the ass. Like crack. I saw the puzzle on eBay today for double what I bought it for. So I'm just like, that muscle. Chevy! Yes, sir, man. 
Hey, that shit was so hard, boy. Bigger than life. What the fuck? Hey, this your new number? Yeah, it's my new number. I hit, I hit, I hit Miko. Uh, I see you texting, but I ain't know, bro. Cause yeah, some scammy shit. It seems yeah, some scammy shit. shit. Like, nigga, because I know niggas been hacking shit, like, yeah, yeah. Some, some weird shit been happening, so I ain't know, so I hit Miko on the side. He told me that was going to shit. Yeah, man, they, they hacked my shit, bro. I ain't gonna let my head change. They, they got my Twitter and everything, bro. That's weird. Yeah, no, they elite. Bro, that's the first time they ever got me in. I, you been good though, bro? Bro, chilling, bro. Finishing the album, you know, just locked I in. Know. I need to, I'm finishing that motherfucker. I always started. I'm like halfway in. I'm finishing that. Nah, look. I know you moving at your, you know what I'm saying? You gotta come on, bro. Come with you. You gonna come with that sauce. You, you just, you know what I'm saying? You just roll into it. I already know. Whenever. I, I just want to get down, coming through with this shit, though. Yo, I appreciate you too, man. I appreciate you, my God. Do whatever, do whatever. I need some video at the crib, whatever. Whatever we need to do to keep going, bro. I don't Bro, that's hard, bro. I love it. Bro. Yeah. Bro, you too, bro. You snap so crazy. Like, you, you made history with that shit. That shit was like, I'm in the room, like, oh shit, this nigga's glitching out and shit. I'm like, yo, I don't even play Fortnite, though. But I was, I'm on that bitch to see that shit. Like, yo, hard. Oh, Fortnite is crazy. Fortnite is crazy. Fortnite is crazy. Fortnite is crazy. On everything. Got you, bro. See you soon, man. Damn. Everybody, Travis, right now. Yeah. The goat. Yeah. <laughs> no, man, you know, a lot of people just, just, just give you that love, man. A lot of people excited about this solo project. I mean, you know, you and your brother, y'all did like a little Oh, but this is a full on solo by yourself, man. What is it like tackling? It's like, it's not even really that deep. Like, uh, people are trying to make it so deep. Like, you know, I've been like my own artist. Like, me and my brother, we both different artists, but we a unit at the end of the day. Like, we brothers. Like, so, but I still make, you know, I'm always making different music, whether it's Ray Shrimmer or, you know, whatever it is. Sunflower, Unforgettable. I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. We always gonna be Ray Shrimmer, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, we have different stuff to bring to the table, and I'm still my own artist. Like, I have my own views and my own sounds that I like to hear. And, like, you know, I got a million songs, I gotta put them out. Like, I can't just have them sitting around. So, yeah, you know, I've been cooking my own way. My album, Human Nature, I'm just working on Human Nature right now. So, how do you decide what to what's Ray Schrumber, what's your solo, what to focus on for a group, what to focus on yourself? How do you make sure you don't ignore the side of it? You don't be selfish? Like, how do you balance the two? And what do you think is going to be good? You got to stay tuned with what's going on around, you know what I'm saying? Like, people, and it depends on what song drop, like, if I'm super piped up, just dropped a hit, Super Smash, just went number one. I might need to drop a solo, you know what I'm saying? Just start dropping solo, get on solo vibes. But we can't, as soon as Ray Shrimmer, like, it's boom. If we feel like we just got Ray Shrimmer being too quiet, it's like, bro, we gotta go back up. Let's go, boom. We put up some Ray Shrimmer shit. Shooting videos, going big with it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But. Do you ever feel like people try to pull you apart and you have to say, but I'm, oh, just, definitely. I'm not just definitely. a solo artist? So what do you, how do you handle definitely. that? You just gotta be like, fuck them, and you just, you just, we know what we got, you know what I'm saying, unit. Right. Like, and it's like a lot of fans that know what we got too, so they, they want Ray Shrimmer, they, they don't care what we do, as long as we keep putting out Ray Shrimmer. Right, because like, you got a power in being a duo yeah. and being a solo artist. It's almost like a double side, double, a double side or something. There's two, you know, two things in the bag, not just being yourself. But exactly, exactly, we branching all the way out. Like, I can't remember, I said this, this all we can do is Ray Shrimmer. No, Jimmy might want to say, hey, Fuck you, bitch. And I might want to come over here and say, free all the print. Like, you know what I'm saying? We might have different views at some, some particular point in time. It's like, we got to do our own thing. But that don't mean we apart. Just because just I'm going over here around the block, rapping over here, that don't mean I left and just be done with the great shrimp. No, that don't. You, you know more what I'm saying? Blood. Branching I, out. Y'all getting more seeds. Yeah, you got to plant more seeds. You know what I'm saying? 
For that forest, yes. Yeah. For real, <laughs> exactly. What what is you know it what like? With, what is it like working with Travis, man? Like, I think y'all two is like probably like two of the most energetic guys when it comes to that stage show. Yeah, nah, Travis, man, he a goat, man. Like, ultimate respect for dude. Like, he's he makes creative vision. Like, his vision is just so next level. It's like. Normal motherfuckers is not thinking about it. shit. He's thinking about it. Like even when he goes to put out his music, you know, he's not gonna drop it. Like put out, he's not putting out a song. He's releasing a fucking song. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Always right. on a huge scale. It's just like it's an event. Him. Right. Yeah, it's like him. It's like it fits him so well. It's like it's him. Right. On this new album, this Human Nature joint. You got all of them, them big giant hooks, man. Like what you did. Oh yeah. We got trap shit, pop shit, R and B shit. It's just vibical. I'm calling it vibical. Mike will Mike will told me personally, he said you the closest thing to Michael Jackson. For real. I be getting that a lot. I got the same birthday as Prince. Oh, but cool. but like I feel what he's saying in a sense, like, cause it's like the singing and it's like how much I care about the music and like the type of notes I be hearing and stuff is like, <laughs> and when I got my throw out, I look like my exactly a little bit. Are you a perfectionist like MJ? Cause you know MJ. Hell yeah. I be in the studio wrong. I stay in the studio till eight in the morning every day. I'm just like, like, do I might do the same line 40 times. Like rap the same line 40 times. I don't like one little bit of Dang about it, I just gotta redo it. Yeah. So Mike hit his goal and he did accomplish it. He said he wanted to be the best ever after he put out um off the wall. I don't know if you if you ever if you saw the documentary where he wrote a letter to himself and he said after off the wall, because you know, they gave him all of the R and B awards, but they didn't give him the top awards and it pissed him off. And after the that, rap award? No, they gave him the they gave him the, they gave Michael Jackson the R and B awards, but uh, they didn't give him like the pop music awards, and he thought that he got jerked for the album Off the Wall. Rap, it wasn't even no rap. I mean, rap was out back then, but it was so underground, it wasn't even considered for award shows back in like '79, like 1980. But Mike. Mm -hmm. Mike said he was determined that he was going to change his persona. Uh, he was going to be MJ. And he was going to be the best ever, man. Is, is that your goal, to be the best ever? For sure. Yeah. And we might not even know what that means. You know what I'm saying? It might be the highest standard ever, the best ever. You know what I'm saying? We only know, but I should definitely would. Why we do it? You know what I'm saying? We want to be on top. I mean, y'all, y'all doing a, you know, y'all, y'all doing a pretty incredible job, to be honest. You know, um, appreciate it. You know, y'all craft and what y'all been doing. I've been following y'all, like, you know, since y'all came out and, I've been, and, and, you know, aside from the fact that y'all really real about it, y'all authentic, you know, you know, no bullshit or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it looks like y'all having a lot of fun. Yeah, know? definitely. That's what I always make sure I'm doing, like, having fun with it still. Like, Yes, you know, when you, and you know, when you, you deal with a lot of success and shit like that, you know, like, um, I was talking about, like, some shit like MJ, like, you always go for real life shit, too, you know what I'm saying? So the fact that you can, you know, still keep a smile on your face, and shit, that says a lot about y'all. You know? For real, now, we just know what it takes, like, we, we learn what it takes, like, even for a million times, like, we learn what it takes. That's the one thing it takes you the farthest that I learned. Having a good attitude, like, really, like, put you ahead of shit. I don't know you well, but looking from the outside, looking in, I always watch you and think, like, you really figured out how to grow and adjust in the game and look like you understand it and are having a blast. Exactly. Like, just look like you're genuinely enjoying the fame, the music, every, right. every aspect of it. And it's so you can simple, very like, well get you caught up it, in like, it, but you don't seem right. like you get caught up in the bullshit. You look like mm. you figure out a way to dodge and weave and get through. You know, I'm That's impressed exactly by what that it is. because of your age and because of what you've been through. 
you know, there's a lot of bullshit out there, but you're very impressive with how you've been able to deal right. with all of yeah. it and rise up, you know? I appreciate that, for real. Now, that's what I learned, like, just even doing shit and messing up. Like, I was like, damn, so I got to do this next time. And boom, just a lot of shit be irrelevant. Like, just, it's there to distract you literally from focusing. Like, 80% of the shit is there to distract you from focusing. But once you learn how to just step away from that and just watch it, you just like, okay, I don't even need to do this. Like, this don't even, this is meaningless. A lot of stuff is meaningless. You know what I'm saying? Have you been disappointed by anything along the way? Um, Carol Baskin walking free. Really? <laughs> Who knows? Carol Baskin might not have done it. She did it. <laughs> she did it. Carol needs to have her in court. Uh, it's like it's like fifty. He was like, he said he did that shit. He did that shit. <laughs> Carol is a tough line down right now. Carol comes up in so many phone calls that I have in everyday life. <laughs> nah, I appreciate we we appreciate you, my nigga. Like y'all, y'all niggas is definitely popping. We fuck with Rolling Loud too, you know. So we. Oh we, yeah, love Rolling Loud. That's one of the best festivals in the world. Like Tarek and Mad, those is those is oh. my guys. They talk to them today. Talk to them a lot. You know what I'm saying? And, it's always been documenting y'all. Like I said, y'all y'all doing a good job. Keep it up. Y'all always got our Appreciate space. that, bro. You know New vibes on the way. Crazy. Thank you. Much respect. Thanks for uh, for coming on with us. And uh, No right. problem. Good to see y'all. All right. Good to see you, bro. Squad, squad. Gang, I'm going to see y'all soon, man. We're going to be back in the street soon, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Everybody take care. Take care.